Thank you, Senator Freaky. Senator Cash. Thank you, and I rise to speak on this bill with, quite frankly, sadness and deep regret. It is devastatingly sad that Senator Henderson has had to bring this bill before the Australian Senate. This is a bill about anti-Semitism that has infected our Australian universities. And it is a shame, in fact, it is a stain on the leadership of our nation under Anthony Albanese as Prime Minister that we have found ourselves in the position where it is indeed needed. The Commission of Inquiry into Anti-Semitism at Australian Universities Bill is a bill that is deeply necessary, but our reality is it should not be. Because as we've seen in the months since October the 7th last year, anti-Semitism in Australia has run rampant. The Hamas atrocities of October 7th commenced an incredible and unprecedented wave of domestic anti-Semitism here in Australia. And this bill is needed in particular because it seems that the root of the infection is found sadly and, quite frankly, appallingly in our university campuses. We have seen encampments where students chanting Intifada and River to the Sea are deciding who should be allowed access to university buildings based on their religion. Their stories are deeply troubling. We have seen stories of Jewish students being spat on and taunted with swastikas. They are threatened and they feel unsafe. In one incident, an expat Israeli staff member's working area was urinated on and the word resign scribbled on their desk. We have seen academics saying Jews don't deserve cultural safety and denying that the rapes on the 7th of October last year even occurred. The message in all of these stories is that Jews are not welcome in places where they live, they work and they study. The message is that the universities in our great country have closed their doors, quite frankly, to Jewish people and are intent on driving them away. It is a fact that in our great country the tone is set from the top. The Prime Minister sets the parameters for the debate through his actions and his words. And I firmly believe that had Mr Albanese, as our Prime Minister, actually stood up on the 8th of October last year to defend the Jewish Australians who were always going to be targeted in the wake of the Hamas attacks, we would be in a different position today. Australians deserve a Prime Minister who sets the moral boundaries for our public discourse. But we do not have a Prime Minister who was prepared to stand up on October the 8th and call out anti-Semitism. We do not have a Prime Minister who was prepared even to set the tone within his own party. A strong Prime Minister would have dealt with the incipient wave of anti-Semitism immediately. Why? Because it was predictable. But we do not have that. We have a weak Prime Minister. We have a Prime Minister who is focused only on domestic polling. And we have a Prime Minister who has allowed the infection of anti-Semitism to spread here in Australia, and that diminishes us all. The bill is needed because the only response by the Albanese government to the rampant anti-Semitism on campus has been to commission an inquiry by the Australian Human Rights Commission. It was a response that has left the Jewish community 
dumbfounded. We have seen a 738 per cent increase in anti-Semitism since October the 7th last year. It has, on any analysis, grown out of all proportion. And as my friend in the other place, Mr Julian Lisa, pointed out in a speech to the Cook Society, in the last three months of 2023, Victoria Police registered 145 prejudice-based crimes. 102 of those complaints, around 70 per cent, related to instances of anti-Semitism. Twelve of the reported crimes, around 8 per cent, were Islamophobic. But let me be very clear. We are against Islamophobia. And in fact, in 2019, in the wake of the Christchurch terrorist attacks, the Prime Minister announced an immediate $55 million in grants programs to fund upgrades for religious communities. This was a direct and immediate response to Islamophobia. We should have seen a similar response after October the 7th. But instead, what we have seen is a narrative of false equivalence. And worse, the disturbing trend is reflected in the terms of reference for this study of racism on campus. Now, there is another problem with the Albanese government's weak response. The Australian Human Rights Commission is not a fit and proper body to deal with the rampant anti-Semitism we are seeing on Australian campuses. It has become abundantly clear in the last eight months that the Australian Human Rights Commission has lost its standing in the Australian community and particularly the Jewish community. It is no longer an organisation that is seen to be guided by principle. The very clear trend is that the Australian Human Rights Commission is beholden to activists who in many respects embody the worst aspects of student politics. It is now seen as a body that advances its own political agenda rather than a body that handles legitimate complaints about discrimination. Worse, there is a very disturbing pattern of behaviour whereby anti-Semitism within the Commission itself is either ignored or overlooked. There's the engagement of Hugh Consulting. Hugh Consulting was contracted by the Australian Human Rights Commission to develop anti-racism materials. But at the same time as it was preparing those materials for the Commission, its principal was involved in the doxing of Jewish creatives. To use her own words, the person that the AHRC, the Australian Human Rights Commission, thought should prepare materials about racism, urged her followers to, and I quote, let these effing Zionists know no effing peace. She claimed that, quote, Zimbos maintained their positions due to other Zionists, quote, in management, and reportedly called them, and again I quote, genocidal fascists who had moved too deep into fascism. Then there's the Human Rights Commission decision to employ a lawyer who was formerly an employee of the Australian Palestinian Advocacy Network, who has publicly reposted statements that described Hamas, and I quote, an effective political player in the struggle against apartheid, oppression and colonisation, which has achieved remarkable success in preventing Israeli violence in Jerusalem and freeing Palestinian hostages abducted by Israel. She publicly claimed that, quote, looking at Israel's psychopathy today, October 7 should make a little more sense to you all. Quite frankly, there are no words. How on earth could a person credibly suggest that the murder, torture and rape and violence of October the 7th make sense? 
How could a person credibly be appointed to hold a position in the body charged with investigating anti-Semitism? And then there's the engagement of Mr Nazim Hussain to promote Australian Human Rights Commission events. Now, this is a man who supports the phrase, from the river to the sea, which we all know calls for the destruction of the Jewish state. And then, of course, there's the belated decision to stand aside Ms Taneem Chopra as an anti-racism ambassador because she appeared to dismiss the concerns that Jewish women were raped by Hamas on October the 7th. Ms Chopra shared posts saying that Israel has forfeited its right to exist and, quote, Zionists are just your common garden variety racists and white supremacists. Now, keep in mind, again, that is one of the faces of the Australian Human Rights Commission faces of anti-racism. Then, of course, there's the decision at last year's Human Rights Awards to engage in entertainment a singer named Kian and her co-performer Yara. Now, they appeared on stage at the Australian Human Rights Commission's premier event of the year chanting Free Palestine and claiming that Israel was engaged in a genocide. And then, of course, there's the anonymous letter signed off by staff across eight teams in the Australian Human Rights Commission, which condemned the Commission for not speaking out forcefully, wait for it, in support of the Hamas attacks. The President of the Commission said the concerns of staff expressed in the anonymous letter were, and I quote, a paramount concern. And even at that point, months after October the 7th, when the Australian Human Rights Commission put out its press release about anti-racism, about the anti-racism inquiry that was meant to be the response to anti-Semitism, just wait for it, they conveniently forgot to mention anti-Semitism. So the question that, quite frankly, all Australians should be asking themselves is, how did the Australian Human Rights Commission fall so far? Can you imagine any other body entrusted to deal fairly with people's complaints engaging in that type of one-sided advocacy? We would not accept courts that deal with criminal matters publicly arguing for the interests of victims or against the accused. Tribunals that deal with commercial or administrative disputes do not publicly speak for or against the parties. And the commissions that handle workplace relations complaints do not publicly make the case for employers or the employees. And there is, of course, a reason for this. It is to protect themselves from perceptions of bias. It preserves impartiality and their credibility in resolving a problem. Based on the evidence before us and the actions of the Australian Human Rights Commission, they have lost all credibility when it comes to anti-Semitism in this country. Again, it is devastatingly sad that the bill that we have before us today is necessary. It is devastatingly sad that anti-Semitism has infected our Australian universities. It is devastatingly sad that we have a weak Prime Minister who is not even prepared to set the tone in this country and properly condemn anti-Semitism in Australia. It is quite frankly an indictment on the Australian Human Rights Commission that they are even looking at anti-Semitism in Australia. This bill sets up a necessary, credible and sensible pathway forward to root out the infection of anti-Semitism in our universities through an independent, respected 
and credible judicial inquiry. It behoves us to fight the rampant anti-Semitism on our campuses, and it behoves us to support the bill.